I want to welcome everyone again to another short demonstration on Creo Parametric. Today we're going to look at mechanisms, and in particular generic gear mechanisms. So what I have on my screen basically is a device with several handles, several needles, and we would need to make a relationship between those. Right now there are no relationships between any of the handles or any of the needles on the display as you can see me moving these around. The only type of constraints on these are assembly constraints either using pin constraints in this case connections or sliding connections limiting their degree of freedom if you will along that either axis or that uh, plane um, within the assembly itself. So let's go into mechanism. Again we're using Creo Parametric based on the Microsoft GUI ribbon so we have the ribbon across the top and all of the other apps in the Creo suite will follow along suit using the actual ribbon. In this case, let's launch Mechanism. Once in Mechanism, the ribbon changes to the new Mechanism, in this case, ribbon. Now again, we're going to look at generic gears. So I'm going to start my gear command. I'm going to leave the type at generic. There's other gears as well, bevel, worm, rack and pinion, your other dynamic gears. But this one is just going to be generic, showing that you can actually make relationships, in this case, that are not technically gears, but movable parts. So in this example here, I'm going to use the dial on the left and the needle on the uh, of display above that as the basis of a relationship we'll make with, in this case, a generic gear. So we'll start, in this case, first of all, just by selecting one of the actual assembly constraints for gear one. I'll go to gear two and I'll select the second assembly constraint. Now at this point, what I need to do is make the relationship between the two. So on my properties tab, I do have a default type of relationship or you have a user defined relationship. In this example here, what I could do is I can say for gear one, or the element I chose for gear one, it moves one revolution for every 2.5 revolutions gear two moves. And then when I create the gear, in this case, this mechanism, I can see I have that relationship now as one knob spins, the needle turns. Likewise, you can actually, in, in this case, use a different type of mechanism, one to maybe translate in a linear direction, and having the other mating gear, in this case, generic gear, rotate in a rotational direction. Again, we'll go to gears, generic gear, same as before. I'll select one of my, in this case, assembly connection constraints. This one on the actual dial first. I'll then go and select the other constraint uh, on the other, in this case, mechanism that's going to be sliding. And then just like in the previous example, I'm going to set my properties to be something as user defined. Now in this example here, I have a relationship of millimeters per revolution. So how many millimeters am I going to move per revolution? In this case, I'm just going to key in a variable. And then again, once I move my slider, I'll see I have this relationship created. And the third one is two sliding, in this case, generic gears. So just like I did before, we'll go to generic gears, select one element of my generic gear, go to the other generic gear, select it, and just like before, we have the relationship. In this case, it's millimeter to millimeter. So what is my ratio? And maybe it's in this case 1.2 as a relationship, or as a ratio. And then as I move one gear, the actual other gear, in this case generic gears or the elements being uh, created by the mechanism or bound by the mechanism, move in unison. So again, a quick overview of using mechanism, in this case gears, but generic gears that technically aren't gears. Thank you once again.